So my understanding here is that we want to talk about the threats in Congress, the federal threats, to Medicaid disability services. And um, the two primary and most, most worrisome um, proposals uh, that Congress has before it concerning Medicaid are something called Medicaid block grants and something called per capita caps. So per capita caps is really just um, another formula for uh, figuring out what your block grants are. So I'm going to generically refer to both of them as, uh, as block grant proposals. So the first thing is that a block grant is not an entitlement. A per capita cap block grant is not an entitlement. So um, the definition of entitlement is uh, the state or condition of being entitled, that is, having a legal right to benefits specified by law or contract. So there's nothing uh, embarrassing or uh, bad about having an entitlement. If you own your house, you're entitled to your house. Um, if you um, have a, a driver's license, you're entitled to drive. Uh, being entitled to something simply means that it's legally protected. So a lot of people talk about entitlements like it's a bad thing. So I have over here on the on the left hand side uh, a typical uh, Facebook thing that says Social Security and Medicare are not entitlements because we paid for them. But really, if you take a look over on the right, it would be more correct to say Social Security is an entitlement because we paid for it. So the problem with with uh, a block grant versus an entitlement is that your legal right to services uh, essentially disappears. You only have a right to whatever um, the state decides to allocate instead of having a federally enforceable right um, to a particular benefit. So as an entitlement, eligible people are entitled to all of the covered services that they require and that they can show they're eligible for. Uh, when a person is denied a covered service, they have a right to have notice and they have an ex and to get an explanation. So if somebody says, no, you can't have um, physical therapy or you're only entitled to 25 visits or you can't get the services on the DD waiver, you, they have to give you a notice of that and they have to explain why they don't believe you're entitled to it, why you don't have a right. They also have to give you the opp opportunity to appeal that decision, to say, I disagree, I think I do have a right, and I want to talk to an independent hearing officer and tell them why. If you have an entitlement, you have a right to a hearing. Uh, and in, in the end, uh, if it's an entitlement and you're denied something you think you're uh, eligible for, you have the right to take that case to court. So the state and the federal governments both have to pay their fair share of whatever is covered and provided. There are no caps, there are no limits in terms of what the federal government has to pay. Whatever state covered Medicaid services are paid for, the federal government has to pay their share, and the state has to pay their share. As a block grant, um, that doesn't happen anymore. Hey, As a Jim. block grant, when the money runs out, the coverage stops. The services can be denied. States control the amount and the kind of services that are covered, and the Medicaid participants don't have a legal right to coverage of services. Uh, depending on how they write the statute, there may not be a right to notice or explanation. Um, there is no guaranteed right to an appeal or a hearing uh, or to take the decision to court. Um, if the state simply says, I'm sorry, um, you know, the grant ran out, you don't have any case. You can't appeal that decision. So the difference between being a block grant and being an entitlement in itself is a really important issue for people with disabilities. Um, per capita caps is just another way to put a limit on the amount of money the federal government contributes to Medicaid. Instead of getting a lump sum in a typical block grant, the federal share is based on the number of people that are in the Medicaid program. So in this case, the federal share goes up if you have more people, goes down if you have fewer people, but it doesn't cover everybody's costs, and there's still no entitlement. So um, that means 
that when the when the money runs out, your rights run out. You can't appeal the denial of a service because the money's gone. Whereas under an entitlement, you can. So this is basically a block grant that's based on the number of people in the program. Otherwise, it's not really any different. So here's a, a, a chart that shows you a comparison between block grants and per capita caps and um, how it's a fundamental change to the way we understand Medicaid. So under, under the current program, coverage is guaranteed. And we can't have waiting lists. There are no caps uh, on the federal uh, funds. Under a block grant, there's no guarantee and there can be caps. Um, uh, under the per capita cap, it depends on how they write the bill. They might be guaranteed, they might not. The federal funding is guaranteed under the current program, but it's capped under both of the other two programs. Um, in the, and the state matching payments are required to draw down the federal dollars. It's not clear what happens under a block grant, whether the state has to maintain their contribution or, or not. Anyway, I don't want to get too complicated about this. The point I'm trying to make is, under the current system, you have enforceable rights and you have the ability to appeal and to, and to sue in court if necessary. Under a block grant, when the money's gone, the services are gone and you don't have any rights uh, to, to enforce your uh, access to those services unless they write them into the new bill. So a lot of what will actually happen in any case depends on how Congress writes the law. The, um, Amer the American Health Care Act, which was introduced a while, a while ago and then pulled before there was a vote, uh, gave us some idea of what they might do. But as far as Medicaid is concerned, no difference. Uh, the Medicaid under the new law still cuts federal contributions, still destroys the Medicaid entitlement, and still puts, uh, gives states the ability to uh, switch over to block grants. So in every block grant proposal, the main reason for doing a block grant is to cut the federal funding for Medicaid. That's, that's why they want block grants is because they want to put a ceiling on it. Um, right now, how much the federal government has to pay for Medicaid depends a lot on what happens in the states. If costs go up in the states, then the federal share goes up and they have to pay it. So the only, the, the main motivation for block granting Medicaid is to cut the federal funding. So if Medicaid's not an entitlement and Congress cuts the funds as much as they want or as little as they want, every Medicaid block grant proposal includes big cuts. So the estimated cuts in the current uh, proposal, and as far as I can tell from the reporting, in the proposal that comes up next week, uh, are um, $880 billion over the next 10 years gets cut out of the federal share of Medicaid. And states' requirement to match those federal funds uh, might also be cut. So states can contribute or they, uh, as much as they have, or they may contribute less than they have. The cuts are going to be more severe for some states than others, uh, and Idaho stands to lose more than most states because Idaho has a 70% federal match. That's higher than most states. There are one or two states that, that have a 75% match. Lots of states are closer to 50%. So Idaho stands to lose a lot of money uh, out of this deal if uh, the federal government decides to block that Medicaid. Here's how it shakes out. Um, the cost in billions to Medicaid in the first year is only $3 billion spread out over all of the states. So in the first year, people start to think, well, this isn't so bad. It hasn't really hurt us that badly. But then it goes up to $18 billion, then it goes up to $26 billion, and as you can see, by the time you get to 2026, um, then you're losing $155 billion a year. Over that 10-year period, a total of $880 billion. So the thing is, it will not feel that bad the first year. It'll, it'll start to hurt the second year, but then it will get much, much worse. There's also another threat other than Congress doing block grants. There is the threat that the administration itself, the De Department of Health and Human Services, could rewrite a lot of the administrative rules that we have now. Even with the law staying exactly the same, the administration can change the rules. So 
all of our waivers are based on federal rules. And those waivers, even though there's a statute that authorizes them, uh, what they can contain, how they operate, can all be changed. So coverage for DD services in for developmental disability services in the waiver, they could be restricted or even eliminated. Um, prescription coverage can be reduced. People can be required to uh, work in order to get benefits and stay eligible. People could be required to pay premiums for their Medicaid or to pay co-pays for their services. Uh, their protections and, and uh, uh, rights to hearings and appeals can be reduced. All these things can be done even without changing the law just uh, be, by introducing new rules. Now, that's kind of a long process. If they're going to change the rules on Medicaid, they have to put out a notice. They have to go through a comment period. It takes about a year for most rules to be, to be changed. Uh, and you know what's, going, what's happening when it, when it comes around. But this is another threat to Medicaid at the federal level um, that uh, we need to be concerned about and that we need to pay attention to. So what is going to happen now? Uh, so the American Health Care Act is withdrawn from the House without having a vote. Uh, apparently, a new version, is, when I made this slide, uh, in attempts to reintroduce a new version hadn't made any progress. The news reports out today say that it is back. Um, so uh, people who work in legislation uh, refer to these bills that sort of get introduced. Uh, people don't like them. They go away. Everybody thinks they're dead. And then uh, a little bit later, suddenly they're reintroduced again. Um, people call these uh, zombie bills uh, because they seem to be dead, but then they come back and they're not dead and they're still walking. Um, and uh, uh, at least in the Idaho legislature, we always talk about how uh, late in the term, these zombie bills keep popping up when you least expect them to, and you're always rushing out to try to, you know, kill them, which some people have called uh, zombie whack-a-mole. So, uh, so what we have to do is we have to play a game of zombie whack-a-mole at the federal level, and that is every time one of these threats to Medicaid pops up that we thought was dead, we have to go back in and whack it down again, okay? Um, we should be uh, cautious and feeling too good about the fact that um, the, the American Health Care Act was defeated before because part of the reason it was defeated was because it didn't cut enough. Um, there were about 30 votes in the House that were uh, against it, not because um, it was going to reduce coverage, not because it was going to uh, cut Medicaid, but because it didn't cut Medicaid enough. It didn't cut coverage enough. And, so um, <clears throat> that's something to be concerned about. Um, they can get 30 more votes by making the bill, from our perspective, worse. Now, some people in Congress did oppose that act because it was going to put millions of people uh, would lose their insurance coverage um, because it was going to take away their subsidies or that it was going to change how uh, Congress worked on these health insurance exchanges. But some of those congressmen, and I didn't actually hear very many of them saying that the reason they opposed it was because it was going to hurt Medicaid. So what it comes right down to is, even though we know um, there aren't enough votes to pass the American Health Care Act the way it was, we don't have any idea whether there are enough votes to support a bill that block grants Medicaid. So when people go out and count the votes that they're sure a bill will have for it or against it, they call that a whip count uh, because, at least in the Senate, the person who's in charge of counting votes uh, in the House is called the whip. Um, and we have no accurate whip counts for what would happen to a bill that was just about block granting Medicaid. If they can fix some of these issues people had with insurance coverage on the exchange, it's entirely possible that a bill that block grants Medicaid and cuts the federal share uh, could get passed. So, um, why would Congress want to pass a bill to block grant Medicaid? A lot of people in Congress just hate the Medicaid entitlement because the feds don't have control over the cost and because it contributes to the budget deficit. Um, they like Medicaid block grants because it puts a cap on it and uh, it gives them a tool to be able to drop the federal expenditures over the years. And that 
helps them with, uh, with their budget deficits. A lot of people in Congress believe that entitlements cause dependence on the government. And so basically, they, they think that making it hard on people is a good idea because that will force them all to go to work and buy their own insurance. Um, some people in Congress would like to cut Medicaid funding so that they can pay for tax cuts and tax reform. Um, there are a number of bills in Congress that basically say if you're going to, um, if you're going to introduce a cost, you have to introduce a tax to pay for it. If you're going to cut a tax, then you have to cut a, uh, an expenditure to pay for it. So people who want to cut taxes would like to be able to cut expenditures. And Medicaid is a place they would like to cut it because they don't want to cut it from, say, the military. So that's a motivation for some people in Congress. And there are some people in Congress that think that Medicaid is overregulated by the federal government and the states have block grants they'd have a lot more flexibility, uh, they wouldn't be overburdened by red tape and paperwork, and then they could save money. So these are the kind of beliefs that people in Congress have that we need to educate them about. Because first you have to understand that if you cut your Medicaid costs, you're likely to see costs pop up in some other place. The first place those costs are gonna pop up is in the state legislatures. When the federal money in Medicaid goes away, the state legislature has a choice of cutting services or raising state's taxes. So they need to be aware that this idea that if they, we just cut the, Medi the, the Medicaid entitlement, um, everything will be fine. In fact, when you cut here, when you, when you push on it here, it pops out somewhere else. Uh, we need to talk about the fact uh, that um, while um, there are some features in Medicaid that make it difficult for people to get off and become dependent. It's also true that for people with disabilities, Medicaid is actually the services that help them work their way towards independence. Medicaid is the service that pays for their independence. Medicaid pays for job training. Medicaid is actually the thing that helps people uh, to get out of their dependence uh, to some degree on government benefits. So they need to understand that the way Medicaid works for people with disabilities is not the same thing as just having a medical insurance uh, policy uh, and that, um, that de dependence is a, a different issue for people with disabilities. And I don't really know what to say to people who just want to cut Medicaid so they can pay for tax cuts other than um, we think spending money on Medicaid is better than spending money on tax cuts. So um, what would happen with Idaho? Why is it not a good idea here? Idahoans with disabilities need Medicaid services to live in the community, to be employed, to, to gain independence. Um, Idaho cannot afford to use state funds to replace these cuts in federal funding. We're gonna be hurt worse than other states because we already have a high federal match rate, which is about 70%. Um, Medicaid is the main and often the only source of funding for long-term care. And as baby boomers age, the cost for long-term care is going to rise. And if Medicaid federal funds are falling, that puts the state in a vice. Uh, we're being squeezed between the greater demand for long-term care uh, with an aging population and um, the uh, re reduction in federal assistance. And finally, Idaho only spends 3% of its total Medicaid appropriation on administration. 97% of Idaho's uh, Medicaid appropriation is spent directly on buying services. So if we're gonna cut, the cuts are not gonna be to red tape and administration. The cuts are gonna have to come directly out of services. 